Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So you're watching Sandhya OVG Study Points. So in today's video, we will deal with one of the most important topics of obstetrics and gynecology that is episiotomy. Okay, so first of all, let's see the definition of episiotomy. A surgically planned incision on the perineum and the posterior vaginal wall during the second stage of flavor is called episiotomy okay so as i've just drawn some of the diagrams here of the degree or we can select the types of the perineal tear okay first of all let's start with the first degree of perineal tear okay this one okay so first of all let me show you how i denoted these are all the parts okay so as you can see here this red one this is a vagina this is the perineal wall or we can say like the posterior vaginal wall or the perineum okay and this is the anus okay so first of all in the first degree of perineal tear the tear will be only on the vagina okay there won't there won't be any tear on the perineum or on the anus okay but as we see in the second degree of a uh, perineal tear as you can see here this is the vagina along with the perineal muscles okay there will be a tear okay but there won't be any tear on the anal sphincter as you can see here this is the anal sphincter there won't be any tear okay and also the anus will be safe okay but in the third degree of perineal tear as you can see here there will be a tear with the vagina along with the perineal muscles and also the anal sphincter okay these are all the things will be included in the tear but there won't be any tear on the anus okay but as we see in the fourth degree of perineal tear as you can see here there will be the tear on all the portion of the perineal or the perineum or on the posterior vaginal wall okay including the vagina perineal muscles and anal sphincter and also as you can see here rectum torn okay so rectal or we can say like the internal portion of the anus which is called rectum that's also will be torn okay so these are all the degrees or we can say like the types of the perineal tear okay now moving to the objectives of episiotomy what are all the objectives of episiotomy why we should conduct this episiotomy at the second stage of liver why so first of all to enlarge the vaginal introitus okay to facilitate easy and safe delivery of the fetus spontaneously or manipulative okay sometimes what happens the vaginal wall or we can say like the vaginal opening is not that much enlarged so that uh, the fetal uh, descent will be interrupted so that to avoid that interruption we should uh, do episiotomy we should conduct episiotomy to enlarge the vaginal introitus or we can select the vaginal opening now moving to the next one to minimize over stretching and rupture of the perineal muscles and fascia to reduce the stress and strain on the fetal head okay so it was all about the objectives of episiotomy Moving to the indications of episiotomy, rigid and tight perineum. If we see the rigid and tight perineum, then we should conduct this episiotomy, okay, which may prevent descent of the fetal head. Now, moving to the next point, increased risk of perineal and vaginal tears. It, uh, there may be some indications like macrosomia, if the size of the baby is very big, assisted breech delivery shoulder dystocia and mento anterior delivery next is operative vaginal delivery whether it's forcep or vacuum past perineal surgery if the mother has already gone in the past with perineal surgery then also this is the indication of episiotomy to be conducted okay Past complete perineal tear repair and repair or reconstructive perineal surgery. Okay, so these are all the indications of episiotomy. Now moving to the timing of the episiotomy. At what time, in which stage we should conduct episiotomy? Okay, first, walzing thinned perineum during contraction for just prior to crowning okay crowning is the stage when we can see the head of the fetus but it's not going inside back to the uterus okay so that stage is crowning but 
we should conduct episiotomy just before the crowning has taken place okay when three to four centimeters of head is visible okay then at that time we should conduct episiotomy next is during forceps delivery if is it is made after the application of blades when we have already applied the blades on the fetal head then after that we should conduct episiotomy otherwise it will be very typical to to be applied blades on the fetal head afterwards okay next is if done early if you just do this episiotomy early before all these things the blood loss will be more and if we done late it fails to prevent the invisible laceration of the perineal body okay so these are all the things we should keep in our mind while we are just conducting episiotomy we should know exact timing to be conducted episiotomy okay now let's talk what the types of episiotomy as you can see here there are four types of episiotomy median episiotomy mediolateral episiotomy lateral episiotomy and j shaped episiotomy okay, let's talk about median episiotomy the incision commences from the center of the foreshoot and extends posteriorly along with the midline for about 2.5 cm okay so as you can see i have just drawn a diagram over here as you can see this is the vulsing portion of the fetal head this is the fetal head vulsing okay and as you can see here this dot dot line we can say like it's a vaginal opening and the the median episiotomy will be conducted from the center of the foreshoot we can say like it's a foreshoot and this is the center so it should be conducted from here just on the midline position okay which is about 2.5 cm in length okay so this is your median episiotomy so as you can see in this this is the opening of the vagina these are all the buttocks this is the anus and the, at the time of the crowning the fetal head will be shown over here in between this gap only okay and if we talk about the median episiotomy then the median episiotomy will be conducted or will be made from the center of the foreshoot which extends posteriorly along with the midline which is about 2.5 cm at the angle of 90 degree okay so now moving to the next uh, type of episiotomy this is mediolateral episiotomy the incision is made downwards and outwards from the midpoint of the foreshoot either to the right or to the left it is directed diagonally in a straight line which runs about 2.5 cm away from the anus midpoint between anus and the ischial tuberosity as we can imagine by ourselves that the ischial tuberosity will be somewhere like this just here okay somewhere here okay and this is the anus so we sh it should be conducted just between ischial tuberosity and the ischial uh, sorry anus okay so it should be conducted in between the midpoint between the anus and the ischial tuberosity just like a midpoint here okay so it should be conducted like this in the medial lateral position it should be started from the center of the foreshoot like this in the medial or we can say like the in a 90 degree angle and after that it should be taken laterally like this okay it may be um, it may be on the right side or maybe on the left side okay depends on the condition okay now moving to the third type of episiotomy lateral episiotomy the incision starts from about 1 cm away from the center of the foreshoot and extends laterally it has got many drawbacks including chance of injury to the bartlins duct it is totally condemned okay nowadays we don't practice this episiotomy type okay so now moving to the lateral episiotomy this starts about 1 cm away from the center of the foreshoot and extends laterally like this now moving to the next one j shaped episiotomy okay j shaped episiotomy as we just can consider by the term of like uh, um, j shaped okay uh, the incision begins in the center of the foreshoot and is directed posteriorly along the midline for about 1.5 cm and then directed downwards 
and outwards along 5 or 7 o'clock position to, av to avoid the anal expinter. A position is not perfect. This is also not done widely. Okay, nowadays we also don't practice this type of episiotomy. Okay, so as you can see in this diagram, this is the J-shaped episiotomy. Okay, now moving to the next episiotomy repair. How we should repair episiotomy after the episiotomy done? Okay, repair of mucosa. First of all, we have to just repair the mucosa, and after that, repair of muscles and fascia. And at the last, repair of skin. Okay, so these are all the repairment techniques. Okay, now coming to the post-operative care of episiotomy. So first of all, we should do like uh, dressing, ambulation, and removal of stitches is not required as they are absorbable. Okay, but if non-absorbable sutures are used, they should be removed on the sixth day. Okay, so this is about the post-operative care now moving to the complications of episiotomy traumatic postpartum hemorrhage extension to a complete perineal tear vulval hematoma infected episiotomy wound dehiscence or we can say like gapped episiotomy postpartum pain and rectovaginal okay so these are all the complications of episiotomy then this there are some delayed complications which can occur afterwards this the first one is sexual dysfunction or we can say like the dyspareunia scar endometriosis there is increased risk of third degree perineal tear in the future deliveries okay it can be risky for the future deliveries as well okay and it can lead to third degree perineal tear Okay, so that's it for today i hope you understood this topic and this is really very important one of the most important topic of ops and gynae so you should understand this one very easily and i hope you understood very well so if you like this video then please hit like to this one and also if you didn't subscribe this channel yet so you can subscribe to make yourself updated with me okay so i'll see you in the next one with a new topic and also you can suggest me a topic you want to be uh, taught by me so i'll just keep, uh, try my best to be updated or uh, make videos on a particular topic you will suggest to me you can suggest me in a comment box okay so uh, i'll see you in the next one till then goodbye take care